Welcome to another episode of the Soul Minded Maverick Podcast. Our guest today is Ruth Thompson. Ruth is a founder and president of Hugs Cafe. Now, here's how inspiration came to Ruth. She had some dreams in the middle of the night that said, here is what you're supposed to do. See, there's kind of a common thread here on this podcast as of lately, where we're having our guest said, I had a dream and here's what I was told to do, or they tapped on a shoulder in a small group or a group meeting somehow. Well, that happened to Ruth Thompson as well. And they, she started Hugs Cafe. Now, it was a bit of a journey to get there, and we'll hear that on this podcast. But let me share with you her mission, her vision, and their beliefs at Hugs Cafe sums it all up in these three things. And you can find it on the website in the show notes. The mission of Hugs Cafe. The mission of Hugs Cafe is to enhance the lives of adults with special needs through training and employment. What a mission. And then their vision. We envision a world where people are recognized for the things they can do rather than the things, rather than the things they cannot. And then their belief. What does Hugs stand for we believe in offering hope understanding grace and success there comes the word hugs to each individual so that they can be recognized for their talents in the community so listen to this podcast episode and enjoy i know you're going to learn a lot from ruth it was quite an honor to be able to speak to her take care so ruth thank you so much for being on the podcast thank you jd for having me i'm looking forward to it yes now you're going to kind of be the anchor for something that we're working on. So I'm going to, I told you before getting on, usually how we do this is just in questions in advance. And I did. And, but there's an occasion, there's a point in time where you go, okay, the questions were okay, but there's something else way more important we need to talk about. So I just okay. want to let the listeners and viewers know that I am putting you on the spot, but something tells me this is exactly the point we need to talk about. So I'm trying to decide where to call this one, the, the fruit of the calling. And now there's a better way to say that, but I'll let the listeners d- discern that for themselves. But let me explain. I had an experience when I visited your cafe that was very unique. And I, quite frankly, had not had it very often. Now, the reason I'm going to describe that experience, but these guests that we have had on this podcast, uh, we haven't gone this path, down this path intentionally. But they're all going, I have found my calling, or I think I've found my calling, or, or I'm searching, whatever it is, they are all dropping that on this podcast without us planning it. So I have a theory, Ruth, that I would like to unpack with you a little bit, okay? <laughs> so you might be the one that pulls it all together. So I had this experience when I visited your cafe, and I went in at, at opening, you were just opening, and I was waiting outside the door in my truck to go in. And it was one of the most meaningful experiences I have ever had in my life. And I have a lot, have a lot of experiences in my life. But I'm going to describe it, and then I'm going to go, go into how did you get there, right? That goes back into the calling. What are you doing? But I'm not going to describe how. I'm going to describe the experience. So I walked in, and... It was, I walked in the situation where immediately I opened the door, I felt something different. Wonderful. (laughs) I don't know if others have that same feeling, but I did. It was as if it immediately, I felt something different, unique, and incredibly special. As if I was in a place that goes, I don't know what's happening here, but there's, um, There's an oasis in a world that's gotten a little bit sideways. And that's why, Ruth, I keep trying to convince you to come to South Carolina uh, because I'd be a guest, I mean, many times. I experienced this, and and here's what I experienced. It was genuine, authentic acceptance. Everyone that worked there, the minute I walked in the door, greeted me with a genuine, authentic smile and caring and concern. Now, I happened to walk in and you were doing a circle at the back with the hands in, and you can go into that description if you wish, but I experienced genuine, authentic acceptance, and if I may go there, a sense of love for a stranger that we're all hungry for. And not only that, the food was some of the, if not the best lunch food, if not the best food I've ever had, some of the best food I've ever had. Wonderful. 
Yeah, so I walked away from there. So let's so I believe that sometimes when somebody gets something just right and they're in their calling or they're surround they're in their calling and surrounded by people other people that are in their calling, it creates that environment. That's my theory. Yes. So could you kind of tell me how that was created and what led you to start the cafe? I would love to. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I, I call it passion, um, calling what, uh, you know, there are many words for it, but, uh, I don't know if I shared with you before, but I, I was this person all my life saying, God, why am I here? Mm. Um, you know, I, I've had lots of friends who are artists or, you know, can sew beautiful vestry garments and things like that. And, and, um, you know, I'm going, I don't have that. I don't have that. You know, why am I here? Um, I had my wonderful husband and, and three incredible children who have, who have gone on to do wonderful things, but, um, always asking that question. Um, I've worn many hats in my career lifetime. The last thing that I did when we lived in Colorado was I was the executive director of a company that provided respite care to families that had loved ones with special needs, Uh, primarily those that um, had loved ones uh, who were severe uh, special needs. But um, I fell in love with a population of people that I had no previous experience with. And, um, you know, told my husband, I think I found my passion and why I'm here. And um, 2004, we moved to Texas. I wanted to continue that line of work. Uh, I found it. Uh, I found my calling. I I knew why God put me here. And at that time in Texas, uh, or they ranked 48th in programs and funding for the special needs or the disabled community. Um, So there really weren't any, uh, very few things for me, but really very few opportunities for them. So, you know, there, there, there's more to the story, but here we are today with the cafe and greenhouse and um, hoping to open a learning center for adults with disabilities. Now, I'm going to, uh, well, I'm going to go in almost, did you hear that echo background? No. Oh, okay. No. That's okay. I heard some background echo. I'll move away from the, so let's go more from a business perspective because a lot of listeners are going, okay, that's, that's great. Uh, she opened my profit. You, you probably hear that all the time. And that's why, oh, I, yes. that's why I started with, but if you do something that's your purpose or your calling, whatever term it is, and it's done with the right intent and in the right place, you're going to see some things. And again, that was some of the best food. Now, now in terms of turnover, your turnover <laughs> rate is pretty much, nil or very low correct jd we've been open for six years we celebrated six years last week in those six years we have lost three two moved away and one food service just wasn't for him he he really was interested in working on cars with his dad um we've lost three i don't know how it is in in South Carolina or any other state that you may have listeners in, but here in Texas, there are help wanted signs everywhere, but mm-hmm. there you don't see a help wanted sign in Hugs Cafe. Uh, yeah. No, okay. and then the, and then the feeling you get. So, how do you create that that environment that I experienced? How do you guys, how, oh. how do, have you created that? Oh, we didn't create that. God did. Yes. Um, no, yes. we, you know, we train our, our teammates. We call them teammates. Um, we train them to do their job, but we didn't give them that gift to 
uh, be the best greeter or, or to come up to your table um, and just, you know, 15 times and make sure you're okay. We didn't train them to do that. Um, we didn't, tr we didn't train them to be the people that they are. They, this population of people can be the most loving and giving individuals on the earth. Um, so yeah, we, we did not train them. <laughs> we trained them. I, we can train someone to do a job. You cannot train them to be the people that they are. And someone with, um, it, it, right now we're focusing on intellectual and developmental disabilities. Again, they're, they're incredible love, incredibly loving. Yeah. It has been, that's why, why I miss, if I live in McKinney, Texas, you'd see me on a regular basis because it's very, it was very in the moment. It was very, okay, you're here. We don't know who you are. It doesn't make any difference. We care about you. We just yes. care about you. Yes. And, and JD, when you walked into Hugs, um, it's unfortunate you didn't come in five minutes earlier um, because we start our morning with prayer. That's why we were all standing in a circle. And... Um, we have Christians, we have Muslims, we have all, every religion that works there. We don't care. Um, and just, I was there yesterday when we started the morning and, and you know, does anyone want to, sometimes uh, one person wants to say the prayer, sometimes no one wants to, but we have a young man who's Muslim and he said, I wanna say the prayer. And his prayer was all about his weekend, that he's going to a wedding. And um, it was just a beautiful prayer. Um, but he always reminds us if, if we get really, really busy, we have not said prayer. Mm. So he gathers us all up. It doesn't matter your, your religion to us. Um, and it really doesn't matter if you're a believer, but that's what we do is we say prayer and we thank God for giving us the opportunity. And if anybody else wants to pray for their cat or their fish that they lost the day before, um, absolutely. And then we do the circle thing where we put our hands in and go hugs, 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 woo. <laughs> Yes, I, th I thought I knew how to pray once. I had an experience. I mean, I, I do, but there's different ways to do it. I had a similar experience where we had a, a group. We were trained in martial arts, special needs community. And I would start it in prayer. I said, okay, I'm just going to take us here and see who wants to pray. And I, I never, you know how this, I never went, are you your turn or your turn or right. any of that. I just said, does anyone want to pray as well? And there were two individuals with special needs that did and one just said i pray that i have taco bell for lunch and i yeah. it was it was beautiful and then another little boy that i didn't even know he spoke he was i thought he was nonverbal. just did the most heartfelt i pray for my mom and my dad and i prayed for our time here together amen and i was going to close us in prayer i said i can't i can't top that that's yeah. it was just genuine, authentic gratitude. Yes, it, uh, it is. It's um, you, you leave hugs a, a different person. You really do. I did. Yeah. I did. So thank you for letting me be in touch with you. Ever so often I email you and just kind of say what's up or what's going on or what are you working on? So thank you. Oh, most definitely. Now, when you, when you said, going back to the purpose, or I was using calling, but you said purpose, because again, we have a lot of people out there looking for that these days. There has to be something yes. different. When you said, here is my purpose, did you run across any times where you questioned if that was actually your purpose? I don't think that I have. 
Um, that's a great question, and, and I've not given it a, a great deal of thought because um, when we moved to Texas and I was looking for an opportunity, a, a job opportunity, and couldn't find something, um, God opened a door. Um, and I hope it's okay that I use God Please. Uh, on, on Please. Your, your podcast. Um, I go and even speak to kids at schools and I start talking about God and I might look at the teacher and say, I realize that this is um, a school district and maybe I'm not supposed to do this, but I'm going to anyway. Um, so I, I loved, to, I, I have always loved to cook and I had management background. And I, I, I actually think that God had this plan for me um, in the fact that there was a local grocery, upscale grocery store that had a cooking school and they were looking for a manager. I applied for that. They asked me what I was passionate about. I told them, they said, make it work here. So I started cooking classes for adults with special needs. So, and everything has just, since, since before we moved here, because it started when I was in Colorado with this one company, um, I, I just haven't questioned that this is what I'm passionate about and this is what God has said you do. I mean, I had a dream two nights in a row to open a restaurant that I had never worked in a restaurant before. I had never owned my own business, never been a part of a nonprofit other than my church. And trust me, it's a lot different. Um, I, I could write a lot of books on the things I didn't know that I didn't know. But uh, God's just, I, I mean, uh, again, I know I'm preaching, but it's its true. God has been with me and those around me every step of the way. I just haven't questioned that this is the right thing to do yeah, and or that this is my passion. Yeah, and please speak whatever way you want to speak to that. <laughs> the last guest I had on here wasn't as, um, you kind of said, may I? He just said, okay, I'm going to talk right now about my relationship with Jesus Christ. I said, go, go. Yes. That's what. Yes. Uh, Yesterday, um, I met with somebody who's going to be on the podcast as well, and he described this situation, and that's why I asked you this question. He said, once I knew what it was that I was supposed to do, and he said the same thing. Once God told me, made it clear to me what I was supposed to do, he said, yeah, I had to make a leap of faith in some ways and just say, I'm just going to go. He said, but then everything just kind of started falling in front of me. It was very similar for you as well, right? You said here's extremely one. similar. Um, uh, again, when I when I realized that I had something that I was passionate about, and and um, then we moved to Texas, and I'm going, well, what am I going to do with this now? And and he puts me in this situation where um, I can do more. And um, again, like I said, the things that I didn't know that I didn't know didn't stop us. Um, uh, truly, I had a dream two nights in a row. Well, to me, that's not coincidental. That's, mm -hmm. that's God. And, you know, if my husband and I both were getting ready to retire. And he says, we've got to do this. God's speaking. So, um, no, I I just can't question it. Did you ever find that the, the right people just start showing, not right in terms of right or wrong, but the people that support you just start showing up? Yes, mm -hmm. most definitely. Um, <laughs> I, I, you know, putting together a board of directors. I'd never done that before. Um, and and friends of mine from my church would say, I want to help you with this. Not realizing that, okay, you know, we've been good friends, but I didn't really realize this one per person in particular, what he did. Well, he was the CEO of a restaurant equipment company. 
And, um, you know, through this, these six years that we've been open, it's people have come in to the cafe not knowing what we do. Um, they found us on Yelp, let's say, and they knew immediately when they walked in the door that there was something different about us. Mm -hmm. And then they've become tremendous supporters. Um, so, you know, we'll get a check in the mail and go, oh my gosh, who, who, who is this person? And, and it'll have this, this just happened this week, you know, this wonderful loving note that says, we just came in and we support what you do. And, and uh, I, I, it's, it still brings tears to my eyes that there are those people out there and that God has, has put them in our paths. Well, you provide an amazing experience. Um, like I said, one that I had myself. So thank you. I'll never forget it. So two more questions. As I said, yes. if, if I'm not careful, I'll be on, I'll have you on here for two hours and ask you 40 questions. So I'm going to respect <laughs> your time. Could you, um, could you tell us a, about the impact that, that say somebody you've employed there has special needs. Tell me about how their life has changed because you gave them the opportunity or you came Boy, together you on the to, opportunity. You want me to pick one story. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. Let me give you uh, a story of Jerry. Jerry, uh, I, he came to my cooking classes. He was in high school. Jerry is a big teddy bear with Down syndrome. Uh, he may have been there when you came mm -hmm. in. I'm not sure. And um, Jerry, um, he's verbal, but you can't understand everything that he says. And when we were training everyone, his mother said, Ruth, he loves to clean. He you might want to consider having him be a busser. And we did, we, we started training him how to bus. And, and one day I saw Jerry just sitting back um, by himself, sitting down, just not looking his happy self. And I went up to him and I, I said, Jerry, do you, are, are you enjoying your job? And he shook his head, no. Mm. And I said, would you like to try to do something else, because that's what we'll do is, well, let's try this and let's try this. And, and he said he would. So uh, our restaurant is a fast casual restaurant where you place your order at a counter. Uh, you're given your number, you go sit down and we bring it out to you. So I said, okay, Jerry, I'm gonna show you how to serve. So I'm showing him the tickets and the, where to find the number on the ticket and then where to look for the number at the tables. And he rocked it. I mean, it took me three times to show him how to do this. And he just rocked it. In fact, the next time for him to do a service, you know, he just kind of pushed me away. He said, I've got this. Um, I was at a special uh, or a special needs basketball game with his mother. And she said, Ruth, I did, she teared up and she said, I did not know he knew his numbers. Mm. Now he had aged out of school. And what that means is he had hit age 22 and could not no longer be in the school system. And she didn't know he knew his numbers. Um, and, and she wow. just cried. Mm. Well, he had no reason to show her that he knew his numbers. He had nothing to entice him to show someone he knew his numbers. And um, I decided the next day when Jerry worked that I was going to test him. Well, actually what happened was I was standing at our counter, I was looking at the menu and Jerry came over and you know he's looking at the menu with me. And I thought, let's see if he can read. And I looked at, I pointed to one of the sandwiches and I said, Jerry, I'm having a real hard time reading today. I can't see this. What does this sandwich say? And he said, Hemi Swiss. 
we have a sandwich that's called the hammy Swiss. And oh, I'm going, wow. wait a minute, wait a minute. And then I pointed to another one and he told me what that sandwich was. Jerry can read mm. and no one knew that he could read, but he's given, he loves his job and he has a purpose and he's showing us that he knows how to do things that no one ever thought he did. Um, and we have so many stories, so many stories. That is yes, a great, great I, one. It, it's wonderful. And his mother is constantly tearing up when she comes in, seeing how, where he's come from. I remember Jerry, he said hello. He was very personable. He was... I think he was clean. Had a he was pushing a cart around. Yes. So he was very. I've got a job to do. He greeted me. He said hello. It was very warm and friendly. And then he went back to his job and he did it. It was. It was oh yes. Great to see. Uh, oh yes. Uh, I'll have to tell you another story. Um, we've had one workman's comp claim, and that is because. Um, Jerry was hugging our restaurant manager and Jerry sometimes doesn't want to let go of the hug. And like I said, he's a very big teddy bear and he's hugging her and he won't let go. So she's trying to get him into the office um, to get, you know, he, he, so he can get out of the line where customers are and they both trip. He goes down on top of her and blows out her knee. Oh, so no. <laughs> no one else has workman comp claims where they could put, you know, cause of accident hugging. That's right. <laughs> so, <laughs> the first I've heard of it, probably the yeah. last I've heard of it. That's the a rare. Yeah. Yes. It, he was just a great part of the experience. I remember Jerry for sure. And, Wonderful. So you, you made reference in the beginning is um, one last question, and it's a two part. Okay. Your plans for the future. And then the second part of that is how can our listeners or viewers best support you? Great. Um, okay. Our plan for the future, we've always talked about how do we do more. A um, couple of years back, we opened Hugs Greenhouse. Uh, because not everyone wants to work in food service. So we opened a greenhouse where we're growing flowers and selling them to the general public and landscapers. How do we do more? How do we impact more lives? So we've, we've always talked about expanding the restaurant. Where do we go to, uh, not expanding uh, the phys physical restaurant that we have now, but you know, do we franchise? Do we open um, in other places in Texas or other places in South Carolina? Um, and, you know, we were really thinking along those lines and, and had a few conversations with people who know about franchising. Um, again, our, our greenhouse came out of Ruth having an, another dream. As I was driving around one day, uh, it came to me that we can impact many more lives if we open a training center um, or a, a, we're calling it HUD Center for Learning. And this way we can train other adults with disabilities, intellectual and developmental disabilities how to work in the food service industry and other hospitality industries. And we'll be working with Texas workforce to help place them in jobs. Uh, we're working with Texas Restaurant Association um, also. So um, we're going to start this in March. And uh, in fact, we're going to do something we haven't done, <laughs> go figure. And um, start a capital campaign so that hopefully in a couple of years, we'll be able to build our standalone building. We're going to start in a commercial kitchen at a local church mm -hmm. um, that has a large kitchen that's uh, very conducive to uh, training, um, say uh, probably about 12 people at a time. 
Um, but we want to build our own center for learning. And um, who knows, we could take it into other industries, but we want to start with the hospitality and food service. So um, that's what the future looks like right now for us. Um, I have been contacted by people across the United States and the world uh, wanting us to put one there. Who knows? God knows. God has a plan for us. I, this is, I, I truly, truly believe that this is our next step. How can someone help us? Um, if you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, come visit us. Um, you can also find us on hugscafe.org. Um, yes, we have a donate button. <laughs> If anyone has any uh, experience in, um, you know, training or, um, you know, it, it, even if someone would like to help us out in, uh, we'll be teaching soft skills. We could do that online, thanks to Zoom and, and this type of thing. Uh, just contact us if, and, uh, Yes, your, your monetary contributions mean a lot, especially if we're going to uh, start a capital campaign. Um, that means a tremendous amount. So there's so many ways that uh, anyone, anywhere can help us. Well, thank you for your time. Uh, your contact information is going to be in the show notes on the podcast. Okay. And this is going to be on, a, on video as well. Okay. All your information, contact information is going to be there. And I just want to end on this to the listeners and the viewers. Stop by. And if you can't stop by, get in touch with them. It is a very special experience. And it is definitely worth supporting in whatever way you possibly can. So thank you so much, Ruth, for your time and, and for all that you're doing. And you and your team are doing. I knew you would probably want that in there, too. So thank Most you so much. Most definitely. I did not do this by myself. Um, yeah, God gave me the right people. So thank you for thinking of us, J.D. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Ruth. You're Take welcome. Okay. Thank you. Bye. And this concludes another episode of the Soul Mind of Maverick podcast. If you'd like to check out the video of this recording, go to circlethepanda.com. You can also see some of our projects out there. Again, as always, I wish you all the best and peace.